And hello, hello, welcome back to the Gay Racing Podcast. It is Zach and Alex here to talk about IndyCar at Barber and all of the other off-track drama that's been going on with IndyCar. And of oh, course, we're also here to talk about NASCAR at the Monster Mile at Dover, where Denny Hamlin got his third win of the year. I'm repping, I'm repping our goat, Dennis, today. I'm, I've been so excited to wear this shirt. I, I bought it right after I saw him win at Richmond. And what well, was a beautiful cool. Mavis car. Now it's ugly because they changed it mid-season for no reason. But um, Why'd they well, do that? What did they do to her? Because I don't know why you would do that. Because literally that first Mavis car looked great. You can kind of see it on the back here. Not really. Okay, yeah. Put our designs on the back of the shirt. But um. It looked great, and they even used that base with the the scheme that they, he won with at Bristol, the express oil change. It was a great scheme. It was simple because the colors. Sorry, I'm getting into paint schemes right now. The colors were popping on it, right? The colors were doing all the talking. You didn't need a really wild design on it. So why yeah. change it? Make it look like an ugly car that got wrecked or something. I don't know. <laughs> if you want to hear us talk about paint schemes more, last week on YouTube we had our little um paint scheme episode reviewing the 2024 paint schemes with drive through davin um he's great we're, we're gonna have more of that in the future there's other parts to that video that's got to come out too so if you want to and you're me the full thing is already on patreon if you don't want to oh, no. wait yep so it's actually so, been on patreon and there's another bonus video over there so yeah little i'm getting promos. back into my paint scheme era i bought i racing over the weekend i've been yeah. racing the little street stocks at the short track I feel like Love a it. real a real race car driver now. So I have plenty <laughs> of expertise when it comes to today's show. We got to talk about Dover. We're talking about Dover or IndyCar first. I don't remember. Uh, we're going to talk about Dover. Dover first. Let's get Dover out of the way. We got to we got to talk about Dover. So I have plenty of expertise when it comes to, you know, the mirror driving, the air blocking. We definitely do that in the street stocks and eye racing. It's very common. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so nascar at dover denny hamlin air blocks kyle larson to win oh my gosh wow i'm so shocked that's crazy kyle larson i've lost never seen race. this happen before like this is crazy wow wow and it really came down to well denny beat both hendra cars off pit road and then there were a few restarts after that larson had the lead on one of them but lost it to denny so it yeah. came down to pit road and restarts and execution there's been a lot of talk about that you know how do you win these races? You have a really good pit crew. You don't make mistakes. And then restarts, 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 restarts. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I think in general, though, the race yesterday was actually pretty good. Um, it was all right. Dover. You can run multiple lines at Dover. Right. Um, I mean, listen, while that ending battle was pretty set in stone, like I knew Denny was probably going to hold Larson off. I wasn't 100 percent sure. It, no, like I was engaged with the finish of the race. Like I had a, yeah, like that was like if Denny made a little mistake at any point, Kyle Larson was going to be right there. And that is kind of what kept me yeah. engaged with it. But yeah. as we've seen with this car, it, it, it's just too difficult to make passes. And, and Larson gets into that mistake. Like Denny wasn't. Gonna yeah. Make a <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unless like heavy lap traffic came in. But yeah, I remember I sat here, I think, when Larson won Las Vegas. I'm like, oh, that was a good battle. Really? What was the difference? Like, it was that was a fine battle. It was a fine race. Perfectly acceptable. I'm not yeah. too chap. Well, I am a little chapped about it because the next gen car sucks. I'm I'm still I'm going to say it every week. Like <laughs> <laughs> gay people designed that car. I'm sorry. That's mean. Gay people designed that car. They were distracted when they were designing that car. They were they were too busy kissing each other and doing gay <laughs> stuff and they were like, you know what? You know what, girl? Let's add a diffuser to it. Yes. Uh, that's what the liberals Let's just wants. add a diffuser. Call it a day. We're done. We're going to ghost her. Yes. We're going to ghost him. We're done. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> yeah. But we'll talk. And, oh, my God. So this the whole new debate. Here's the, here's the, the actual problem with the next gen car, apparently. It's the fact that the drivers can see behind them. We should just put a blindfold wow. over the drivers. That's what that's what's gonna <laughs> fix it. Just don't let them look back. Yeah. We should fire the spotters, as Landon Castle suggests. Somewhat joking. I mean, 
So Larson made the suggestion that they should get rid of their rear view camera uh, that's new in the Gen 7 car. And Denny Hamlin said that, well, no, we have a spotter. They do the same thing. I never really looked in the rear view camera. And mirror driving has been a thing for a very long time. Like this is something, a term you would hear 20 years ago, like allegedly. Well, I think the definition of mirror driving has changed. Like when you're physically blocking somebody off the corner, like slide job esque, I think that's different. But I mean, again, these race cars have been going at, you know, 180 miles per hour for since we've been alive, at least definitely. Right. Yes. Dirty air has been a thing, right? (laughs) <laughs> but to sit here and act like it's the exact same that it's been since, you know, 2024 at Dover is different than 2004 at Dover in terms of the aerodynamics. Yes. I Absolutely. like, let's be real. Let's be, let's be for real for a minute. I I'm tired of this next gen defense of being like, well, this has always been like this or people because... on Twitter that obviously get paid by NASCAR. They're like, well, that was a really good battle. And Larson had a lot of options there and he could have, Blah, blah, blah. Like, I just yeah, disagree. But, so the main problem is that Larson was clearly the faster car and he just was not able to make a pass. Like he was not capable of doing that. And sure, that's a lot of skill and talent on Denny Hamlin's side to keep him behind him. But he couldn't even but pull with, alongside. Right. With thing. this car, you can't even get beside them. And that's the biggest problem here. We can't race. And, even in the most perfect ideal car, that doesn't mean Larson's just automatically going to win. Right. But he should have, he would have had a lot better of a chance if this car allowed him to do what Larson's skills and talents are able to do as well. So it, it's just all around frustrating. I mean, in racing, especially oval racing, again, I'm an expert. I've had eye racing for one whole re- weekend, but getting alongside a guy is like just half the battle. Or rather, getting beside a guy is whatever. Clearing them is the battle, right? Clearing them is the hard part. Where with the next-gen car, clearing them is hard. But getting alongside them in the first place is way too difficult. It's way too difficult. And mirror, mirror driving has always been a thing. But air blocking has never been more powerful. Chris Gabehart apparently said after the race yesterday that well, listen, these guys are so good at air blocking now that if you put these guys in cars, you know, if they were doing this 20 years ago with this skill, that it would work this, it would work. I disagree. I just, and yes, I know he's a crew chief. He's smarter than me. I just disagree with that. There's no way. Like, yes, because it will back work then, a little bit. There was, there were so many more options back then. The cars are were so today. much smaller. They weren't as aero dependent. They were, they were yeah. aero dependent. Let's be real. I mean, even the Gen 4 car late, late Gen 4, but it yeah. wasn't to that extent. They also had horsepower. You could drive into the corner, get beside somebody, or you could, as Joey Logano talked about on series a few weeks ago, you could get behind somebody and loosen them up, right? Because yeah. of the diffuser, Joey Joey says because of the diffuser, that doesn't happen anymore. So, right. yes, it is a next-gen problem. Let's let's be for real here. Like, <laughs> yeah. like come on. It's frustrating. And I do Talk also want to shout out I want to shout out Denny Hamlin, though, because as much as his finish was a little frustrating, it's really cool that he's inching closer and closer to 60 career wins. He said maybe a year or two ago that his career goal, he wasn't if he couldn't get a championship, the thing he'd want was 60 career wins. And I think now he's saying he'd like to be definitively in the top 10 in NASCAR all time wins. He's now tied for 12th all time wins with Lee Petty. That's pretty remarkable. That's a big name, a petty. And I mean, he's right. Just he's approaching Kevin Harvick, uh, Kyle Busch. Like he's getting close to their number now. He's going to get to 59 and then never win again. Right. Oh, no. (laughs) Uh, But um, it's really cool that he's able to do this much. And definitively, we've said this for a few years now. He's by far the best driver without a championship. And he said this year is his year. And I said early in the year, like, hey, then he said it's his year, so it's not happening now. Like, he can't he can't do that. But right now, I think he and Kyle Larson, just like we saw most of last year, they seem to be the best guys. Once again, I would say William Byron, you could have in that conversation as well. Yeah. But he's kind of 
been missing the past couple weeks. I don't know what happened. To, he is. The 24 team is very consistent, but that doesn't, you know, protect him from the races where, I mean, before they finished 33rd yesterday with their issues, they had a string of top seven finishes. Like right. three of them. Like they're quietly five. good is what I'm saying. Like they are. They are very for the wins. Yeah. yeah. I mean, They've yeah, I mean they their stats this year are really good, but I mean they are they are only six in points, right? Which t- is telling me that they're either not getting stage points or just you know those two races where they really had bad results just bring them down. But but yeah, no, I mean the guys are Hamlin and Larson, kind of is it? I don't know. Larson only has one win, like. I guess it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, it's Hendrick and Gibbs. That's really who we should be talking about. It's Hendrick. Right. For sure. I will say with Larson, he dominates a lot of these races, but he's not closing them out. And that's just kind of the story of his career. Dude, six stage wins this year for Kyle Larson. That's the next guy has two stage wins. He's the only one with three or more stage wins. And he has six, six stage wins. He has like so many pulls. He, he's the points leader, obviously. Right? Like Mm -hmm. one more win. And he's like, really close to what, you know, Denny Hamlin's playoff point number. So it's, you know, he's not winning a lot of races right now, but the stage wins, they're going to add up and they're going to be, they're going to be beneficial for them in the playoffs. And of course, if he wins the regular season championship too. Random love for the playoffs. I love that there's several ways to get points. You have Larson getting all the stage win points. You have Larson and, or not Larson, Byron and Hamlin getting all the race win playoff points. Yeah. And then you look at the irregular seeds where they are in the points. It I just, Jackson the Todd format's really good. Jackson Todd sold Jackson, us. <laughs> our, well, our friend Jackson Todd has a thing he posts every week where he takes the drivers and their current playoff points, and then they add the regular season top ten bonus playoff points that they get after race twenty six, and he kind of has a standings of where drivers would be if the playoffs started now, or like their ranking of playoff points. So. Yeah. Like Larson and Byron have been at the top for a while and obviously Hamlin's up there now too. So um it's pretty cool. Yeah, I agree with that. We talked about that with the playoffs last year and it's just unfortunate because again, my little high for NASCAR has just kind of died because I just these races yeah. are just missing something. You know, like I especially when the Xfinity race Saturday, and I know Alex you didn't really watch, but the Xfinity race Saturday, anyone that did watch, you know what I'm talking about. That was a Banger. Whatever word you want to say. Banger. Slay. Um, I was out of my seat. I was hooting and hollering. That is racing. Like, that was mm-hmm. good racing. There was drama. There was drama with strategy. Drama with weather. Obviously, you can't control the weather. but Just ignore that. But the restarts, the racing, a three-wide pass for the lead. Like... That was cool. Where... I. Well, there is no air blocking and mirror driving in the Xfinity cars. I'll tell you that right now, right? Austin Hill was able to send it into the corner and upset Sheldon Creed's car. Well, he literally got into him. Send Sheldon Creed Mm -hmm. up the track at Dover like it was a short track or something. You can't do that in the next gen car. I mean, let's be for real here. And yes, maybe the Xfinity drivers aren't as good as mirror driving because they don't have to do it as much, but. Yeah, that's the point. They don't have to do it as much. So that's why like this whole next gen thing, the defenders and people say, oh, in 10 years, you're going to have nostalgia for the next gen car. Well, I don't know about us, but some people already are nostalgic for 2019, 2020. I've seen some people like that. So someone will. That's crazy. That's literally crazy. I'm not. I don't think I'll ever be. I'll never be nostalgic for this Dover Cup race. Like, I'm going to forget it ever happened. It was one of those. Yeah, it was one of those races. And there's been a lot of races like that this year. Like, unfortunately. Yeah, not every race can be amazing. But like this year now, we started off really, really strong. But now we're kind of in a stretch where nothing is really happening. And we are going to Kansas next. That's always a pretty good race. Kansas, Darlington, Charlotte. Yeah. And you look at even, La- but if you look at Las Vegas earlier in the year, though, we're still going to have the same kind of problems. It's air. Like you're yeah. going to have you're going to have the air blocking. Air is going to be king. Even at Kansas, which I would say is probably the best track on the schedule. However, I think it's going to feel good to go to Kansas, Darlington, Charlotte, 
all tracks that have been really good with this car. It's going to be a breath of fresh air. But uh, yeah, it's funny. It's still not going to be perfect. This car is tolerable when you go to a track where literally you can run every single lane. That's what it takes. Yeah. (laughs) Like, yep. uh, It's just so silly. I guess I'm done ranting about it. We mentioned our friend Jackson Todd. Uh, He joins us after every Kansas race. So that'll be next week. I didn't even Um, consider that. Wow. Yeah, uh, I'll be there as always. Uh, Jackson and I always meet up at Kansas. Uh, I'll be at the tweet up Jeff Gluck does if you're at Kansas. Want to say hi? I'll be I'll be, there. I'll be at Miami for the F1 race. <laughs> yes, that's right. Breaking news. I'll be hanging out with Jordan Bianchi. That's what that reminded me of because Jeff <laughs> Gluck was like, well, I'll be at Kansas. And Jordan's yeah. like, well, I'll be at Miami where I'll be underdressed for once. God. <laughs> I'll be at Miami. Zach's not actually going to Miami. No, I'm not actually going to Miami. I am I'm going to a much bigger race next month. So Yeah. Yeah. The the Xfinity race at Charlotte, right? Yes. I'll be at the Xfinity <laughs> race at Charlotte. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and the Indy five hundred. We'll be go- oh, yeah. we'll be at that. I'm doing the double. Too. I'm doing the double. The actual Yeah, double. yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> But uh, yeah, one other thing with the Xfinity race that I want to mention, uh, Anthony Alfredo won Dash for Cash, and he's with a pretty small team. But uh, Fox did not cover this during the broadcast at all. Wait, they missed they just something? Crazy. I know. Fox never what? misses anything. But okay, to they be did fair, not cover that. To yeah. be fair, the weather delay and all the restarts kind of put them out of their TV window. That's probably what they would argue. And let me but... let me argue against these people on Twitter. Like, wow, they cut away from Anthony Alfredo winning the Dash for Cash for bowling? What? That's crazy. Bro, we yeah. argue every time the beginning of a NASCAR race is cut off because of a basketball game running late. Like, come on. Yeah. Let's let's be for real here. Like, did now, yes. Should maybe NASCAR on Fox Social have the Anthony Alfredo interview. Yes. Did it? I don't think so. They did the next day. Oh, the next day. Cool. When everyone else is not focused on the Xfinity race anymore. Okay, cool. That's yeah, great. I think they should have like right after, but. Oh, know. yeah. But shout out to Anthony Alfredo. That's really cool. It's a lot of money for that kind of a team. And but I think his main problem was the sponsors didn't get any shout outs on national TV. television. So, yeah, I well also, yeah. especially because I, I kind of. Let me let me like backpedal a little bit because the dash for cash is this big thing in these last four Xfinity races. I mean, it's on the TV ticker like they're highlighted in purple. It's a big deal. So if that's the second biggest story besides the winner, let's get a let's get a let's get that interview in and then you yeah. can go to bowling. You know, that's, yeah. that's all there. I think that's all fans are really asking for. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious on the future of that because Xfinity is who pays for it. Their contract ends at the end of this year. Uh, the CW well, is doing all the races next year. Xfinity is an NBC yes. podcast company. So there's question marks on if Xfinity is going to renew. I kind of hope that it comes back in some form next year. And then the CW, it's going to be well, the only thing. Nationwide really did Dash for Cash. It. Nationwide started it, actually, in the next... I guess I guess it's down to the... the spo- Yeah, I, I guess it's down so. to the title sponsor to pay that out. But they continued it. If their no name's problem. on it, I imagine they're paying for yeah, it. Yeah, so Nationwide started it. So I assume, I mean... Maybe I, it's part I, of the agreement of the entitlement of the series. You have to do it, maybe. I don't true. know. True. Yeah. I don't... I think it's cool. It's a little silly. I don't like how Talladega's in the middle of it, because then again... Well, mm-hmm. actually, no, because then it lets us have this story, because Anthony Alfredo is never going to qualify true. for that if Good we point. didn't have a Talladega race. So, yeah. Because, well, Ryan Sieg and Anthony Alfredo won two of the bonuses, so that's pretty cool. That um, is cool. And I just, before we move on, um, Carson Quapel is the deal, dude. That was his, I, I don't think, I was trying to explain the context to you because this was his second career start in the Xfinity series. I believe Carson Quapel, he drives for Junior Motorsports in um, the Cars Tour, I believe, late models. Yeah, and like, in late models, Cars Tour, yeah. Yeah, um, and he's apparently really good there. I think Dale Jr. says he's one of the best race car drivers he's ever seen at that level. And, dude. For your second, his first start was at Martinsville. I believe he finished sixth, right? His second start being at Dover. He's never been at a track that big, apparently, right? Because Dover, yes, it's one mile, but bro, that's a super speedway of one miles. 
right? It's a roller coaster. It's crazy. For him to be contending for the win, he he almost won that race. It was him and Ryan Truex on a restart. For him to be contending for that win, and also he was running up front all day, right? Mm-hmm. That is super, super impressive. And I am sold on this guy, right? Is We're going to see of the week. Up- He's oh yeah, he's my slave of the week. Maybe one of my slaves of the year. I don't know if he has other Ooh, starts coming. Wow. If he has yeah. other starts coming and he gets a win, he might be one of my slaves of the year nominees because he's gonna be a future star of NASCAR. He's gonna be in that um he's gonna be in the cup car one day. Hopefully the cup cars don't suck by the time he gets there. Same with <laughs> Connor Zillish. Connor Zillish won the Arca race at Dover as well. Another really cool story. Um yeah. that Arca race was wild. Oh my god. Um yeah, cool story for him. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot, a lot of young talent coming up. Pretty cool. Um, yeah. Loved Dover. Good, good, good crowd yesterday. Apparently, yeah, it looked like a Dover was nearly sold out. It looked packed. I don't think I've seen it that packed in well, a very, very it, long time. It makes sense because J- Jeff Cluck said this on the teardown, book, and I didn't realize this. You know, twenty twenty was COVID year. Obviously, twenty twenty one they only had like half capacity because of like COVID. You know, yeah. Twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three were rained rained out. So this was the first normal door right. race for the crowd in years. I wonder if that has something to do with it. Like no one's been able to go or a lot of people yeah. haven't been able to go. So now they're like, everyone decided to go this time. That would make sense. Yeah. 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 Uh, cool. One more like one more NASCAR thing here. Uh, Eric Jones, he was out with a back injury after that nasty crash at Talladega. Uh, Corey Heim is who Legacy Motor Club picked to replace him this weekend. Uh, Corey yeah, Heim, he, I believe, is just a Toyota reserve driver. Yeah, so, he, I mean, like that that's in sense. the I get whatever contract he signed. I get like the, that's his official, which we don't see that a lot for a lot of NASCAR teams. Like I feel like a lot of NASCAR, or maybe I maybe they do that we just don't hear about it. I guess. Like yeah, for example, if and Hen- if a Hendrick driver got injured right now, who fills in? Ooh, well, last year was Josh Berry. Right, but now, jo- so it's like, He's do they Ford. pull someone from Junior Motorsports? Like, who's there? Probably like, like an, an Allgaier. Just an oh, Allgaier. you look like Sammy Smith. Sammy Smith maybe would be just, cool. Maybe just an Allgaier. Probably just an Allgaier, though. I don't know. That's like, again, probably, I, I don't know yeah. if all teams have something like that, but, you know, these more modern teams like 2311, they got something like that. Or Toyota yeah. in general. But yeah. but, yeah, Corey finished. I just had to pull that 25th. So that's that's solid. Sounds like he he's hey, out of trouble and everything. I didn't know he was in the race yesterday, which is what you want to do, especially again at Dover. Yeah. Making your debut yeah. at Dover is like making your debut at Martinsville to me. So, right. Yeah. yeah so good for him. Uh, but one thing I want to mention with this, and it is kind of a bizarre thing. Uh, Brad Keselowski made a comment about it for some reason. I'm pretty and... sure he had something really reasonable to say. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, he said that someone else driving your car is like someone sleeping with your wife. So he's like, if someone ever drove my car, yeah, I hate when that happens, Brad. Uh, we totally relate <laughs> to that. So I, is Brad speaking from experience? Like, what? <laughs> so my question to Brad is: Is Austin Sindrick sleeping with your ex? Because he's in the two car. Like, is that? Well, I don't think Brad here? wants 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 her anymore, anyways. So that two car, where <laughs> yeah. is that two car in points? Twenty. Oh no, nineteenth, nineteenth. Oh, okay. okay. Not in the playoffs, but only a few spots behind Brad. Mm. Mm. But I don't know why Brad said this. <laughs> like, this is just so random. But... Well, to be honest, it is a good analogy because, yeah, it hurts. We hear it all the time. It hurts to see someone else driving your race yeah. car. And as we're, we're going to get into this in the T, but man, if you're oh, yeah. not in the race car, you don't know what. You don't want, like Eric Jones, for example, you don't want Corey Heim to get in that race car and finish top five with it. Right. You don't. Because then what does that mean for your future? Right? I mean, there's only so many seats at this cup level. Yeah. Stick around for the T, because we're talking about this exact same thing in the T later. So there's something very hot there to talk about. But uh, let's shift gears to IndyCar. IndyCar was at Barber Motorsports Park. In Alabama, Technical Scott reports. McLaughlin, he goes back to back at Barber. Sorry, we're good. I touched, uh, I touched my internet cord, and then everything went. Sorry, we're good. Okay, so they did they hear me? I don't know if they heard me then. I don't know. They didn't. Okay, they did not. so if, in case uh, IndyCar is at Barber, Barber Motorsports Park in Alabama, 
Uh, Scott McLaughlin, he won there last year. He wins again. Coming off of all the Penske stuff, we're going to talk about that in the T a little bit. Um, and we're going to say it again later, but if you want our thoughts on the whole Penske penalty cheating thing, we made a bonus video about it. It's on YouTube and on the podcast platforms. It'll be titled The Emergency Episode. But pretty cool for are we talking Scott about that McLaughlin. Now? Like reaction to, or we're going to save that for the T? Let's save that for the T. Okay, but, we have we have we have some a little more stuff to say because Joseph had a press conference, so we'll talk about that later. But yeah, bounce back for at least one of the Penske guys. Penske as a them. whole, not a whole, a sixty six percent, sixty six percent bounce back. Because um, Will Power finished second. Yeah, good. good uh, and and the other Penske driver, of the team, <laughs> the other Penske driver finished sixteenth. Uh, you can figure out which one that was. We'll talk. about Well, that that's later. because. He Marcus Erickson got into him for 15th place. <laughs> yeah, but I want to shout out uh, Linus Lundquist, who was also on that podium with Power and McLaughlin. Slay of the week to Linus Lundquist. Like that was such a really impressive performance. He's impressed, I think, multiple times already. He's only been in the car like, what, six, seven races now. Very, very impressive. I thought he might have had a shot at the win if he had a really, really good restart. Was he the Indy Lights champion? Yes. Two last years year? ago. Two years ago, right. Okay. Rasmussen was the champion last year. Oh, and we were talking about him before we recorded. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> he was on screen a lot. A yesterday. tale of two champ. Oh, look, next year, Christian Rasmussen gets a podium here. Okay. We're, we're good. Hmm. We're good. That a bold it's, prediction? It's that that gap year for Linus really made a made the difference. Yeah, and so this race at Barber was interesting. Ag- it had everything. It was not boring. It was not boring. No, <laughs> there was something happening. People were making mistakes. Drivers were very aggressive, getting into each other. Like what did uh, who on the broadcast? I think James Hinchcliffe said this was like Bristol. I, I like that. Yeah, comparison. he did say that. It because was very were, aggressive. People and were bumping and banging. They were shoving each other out of the way. Well, what's crazy is Barber Motorsports Park is a very fast roller coaster racetrack. It is not like you expect to see RG Bargy at Long Beach and St. Pete street circuits, right? Where it's hard to pass. You might have to get the elbows out to make a pass. It's slower speeds. But we didn't see any of that at St. Peter Long Beach. We come to Barber, the first permanent road course, the highest speeds that we've gone all season. And this is when Santino Ferrucci is like, yeah, let me run everybody off the track. Yep. Joseph's like, yeah, let me cut this guy off. Pato's like, yep, let me hit all these curbs just the wrong way so my car spins out. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Like, perhaps that makes it easier to make mistakes because you're going faster. It makes it easier to make mistakes. I just find it interesting because I feel like most drivers this weekend, maybe they were salty about the Penske drama. They just felt more aggressive, which I think like was... everyone, everyone seemed to be on edge. Everyone just yeah. seemed to be driving mad. And it's just, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind it of weird to me. It was, weird. it was interesting. And yeah, like Pato award ruined his day. I, I missed a start by a few minutes, but uh, Santino, you said he ran Colton Herta off the track. Uh, and Multiple you said times. on Twitter that Santino should have been parked. Did you want to elaborate on that part? Well, I saw Santino. He. Oh, say so. Curto was getting passed by. I forgot who it was, but then like into turn one, I believe. And then Ferrucci tried to follow who was ever making the pass on Herta. So he tried to kind of like at Martinsville where it's like you follow the other guy making the pass. So Ferrucci was trying to be very opp- opportunistic about it. And mm-hmm. he got into Herta, kind of ran him off the track a little bit. Well, then these two guys, like a NASCAR race, are hit or slamming into each other in the back of the field. Ferrucci runs Hurdle off the track again at another point, like very egregiously. It wasn't like it wasn't like um, it was kind of like Denny putting Ross in the wall at Phoenix, where it's like, he's, okay. it looks like Ferrucci's letting off the steering wheel to me to shove Hurdle off the track. Boys, no, cut it out. Either both of them or Ferrucci c- park them. Gay race control is parking those drivers. I'll tell you what. If I'm in, if I'm running control. that IndyCar race, I'm parking those drivers because mm. I don't know. You don't. Is this the look for our series that we want? I don't know. Maybe right. it is because I'm saying how the RG Bargy made the show made the race a lot better. So maybe it is what we want. 
They didn't give right. too many penalties out yesterday. Which, you know, that's I would say it's a good thing. We talked about this after uh, Long Beach with the Herda New Garden contact. And we were like, yeah, that shouldn't be a penalty. And Joseph made a comment like, well, that's set, or Tim Sendrick made a comment. That's that's a new standard. And it was just like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I it seems they that. only give penalties if your contact causes a car to spin off and like get wrecked or mm. rather spin off and like. Yeah, I guess spin off the racetrack completely, right? Like ruin yeah. their run. Um, like because Pato got a penalty for hitting the curb and getting into. Was it Fittipaldi, I believe? And then 30 car? And then um, who else? Oh, Augustine Canapino at the start, I believe, when his turn one incident. He got a penalty for that, I believe. Yeah. I might be wrong. but um, So yeah. I think that's fair. We don't need to be F1. Right. And yeah. so now before we get into the big story of the IndyCar race, uh, I want to list off the points real quick, because for the very first time in his career, Colton Herta is leading the championship standings. Uh, and if you recall earlier in the year, uh, both here and on Taylor Kitchens of the Yellow Line show, I was like, Colton Herta will not win a race this year. That's my bold prediction of the year. Uh, I was like, he's the weak leak and Andretti and all this stuff. He's a points leader. Credit to him. He still hasn't won, though. Um, just saying. Will Power is second, only one point behind. Polo is minus three. Dixon minus seven. And Felix Rosenquist is fifth, 13 back. Shout out to Felix Rosenquist. That's very, very cool. Because Shank has not been good, like at all in recent years. Yeah. First couple of races there, fifth in points. That's very impressive. I think Felix so, yeah, the, needs like. I don't know what I, they just need to get a rhythm, I think, because I feel like that team makes mistakes like they get caught out in, on starts a lot, like they'll qualify really well and then they lose positions on the start. So once that team gets in a yeah. rhythm, I think they could win races. And also Scott McLaughlin, who did win this race, he went from 29th in points, partially mostly because of that penalty and then finishing last at Long Beach. He is now ninth in points, 42 points out, plus 20 nice. positions. Not bad. So that's crazy. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good job, Scott. Because, I mean, again, Scott Dixon had a really just bad day. 15. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he they kind of missed it all weekend. And yeah, um, pretty but, rare but, miss for Dixon in the nine team. Yeah. But guess what? So, guess what? Polo finished what top five, right? He got another top five mm -hmm. finish. Yep. Dude, These guys doing, can't keep doing that. That man's he's dangerous. Doing, he's doing what he's been doing. I'm just saying. Like, yeah. And as we head into May, I think Pelot has been the favorite for the 500 the past couple of years. If Pelot can put it all together, like watch out. Like that was his only like little, I know he's, he finished pretty good at Indy still, but he had that one pit road incident with VK last year. I really think Pelot... Just continue this trend. I do not want Alex Pelot to win the Indy 500 that I go to. That please. He might be in the pride car, though, if DHL does that again. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I'm good. I hope I'm they good. do that again. That's Sorry, I was imagining a blue NTT 10. And that, now that oh, you mentioned no. the D I forgot about DHL. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, never mind. We're good. Yeah. He was in the green car, car yesterday. I don't like him in the green car. Me neither. So, one more thing with IndyCar. Uh, what there the was hell? a casualty. <laughs> uh, Georgina lived a great life. She always held on tight on a walking bridge in Barber. Um, she tragically lost her grip and she fell. Uh, it was all caught on camera. It was very devastating. Um, and then Zach, James Hinchcliffe at Townsend Bell had the audacity to debate if her falling to her death should be a caution. <laughs> Can I explain I, what went I can't my believe head? it. Yes, please do. All you, right. You, you so FaceTimed me to do this, and I was laughing so hard. Listen. So yes, please. <laughs> so I'm watching the IndyCar race, as anyone does, right? And the camera cuts to what is the mannequin laying in the grass. But all I see is a woman's hair and some clothing and some grass. Mm -hmm. I immediately think, oh, that's a drunk race fan passed out. Okay, funny cameraman. Ha ha. Oh, they're next to a piece of asphalt. That's kind of weird. Certainly, that's not the racetrack, right? It was, um, it was the racetrack. So I'm like, 
Oh, so a drunk Why race fan. This? this drunk woman somehow got past the security and is passed out on the side of the racetrack, right? Mm-hmm. And then, I guess, I don't know if Townsend or James said this, but they're saying that she fell from the bridge, the, the overhead bridge, right? <laughs> so I'm like, holy crap, this woman <laughs> fell from the bridge into the... Again, I think this is a real person the entire time. This real life woman fell from the bridge and is laying in the grass right next to the racetrack. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm watching the TV with my jaw dropped, my heart stopped. <laughs> I'm like, girl, what? How does that happen? Someone save her. Someone save her. Oh, my God. And then James Hinchcliffe and Townsend Bell are debating if it should even be a caution. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? (laughs) You need to help her throw the red flag. Help her! <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> oh my god. Then I think it's not and then they show the replay of her falling. I still think this is a real person at this point. Okay? <laughs> I see her falling from the bridge and it's not until the moment that the mannequin touches the ground do I realize it's a mannequin. Because the way it touches the ground, because it's like, it's like, it's stiff. And I'm like, oh, I see. Uh, Now, did that answer mm -hmm. my questions? No, it gave me more questions. Because now I'm like, why is a mannequin hanging from the bridge, (laughs) Alex? Why is it hanging from Uh the bridge? What are we doing? So, Barber (laughs) Motorsports Park has a lot of interesting art scattered around the facility like the there's spider. a giant there's a giant spider Why? there's just a bunch of weird things is, is that museum an art museum it that the be. museum at the track I don't, I don't know so i saw a lot of people saying well georgina should go in the museum now and like maybe maybe it is look it up yeah but um yeah georgina she fell she actually lost her wrist because a car did run over her wrist um <laughs> it's just a motorsports at- museum oh, okay well, a lot of motorcycles but yeah there's just a lot of art scattered around the place i think it's cool it is cool and like this is, this is she's cool. she has been there for a very long time and i've seen pictures of her before like they always show her in the promos and they during like practice sessions they're like there she is she's still hanging on like it, it's been a thing and i guess this year i didn't know li- loose and she fell um but when i initially saw it i thought it was just a drunk person laying on the ground too but then i realized it was the track and i realized it was a mannequin okay that's spiders yeah. i'm looking at a picture of the spider and it's kind of freaky there is a lot of art there's these guys like riding wheels like they're yeah you they're like you i like that i i like barber i like how they have a bunch of weird art around the track i think that's cool yeah, because I knew about the spider. Now I know about Georgina. I the yeah. funniest thing to me is the fact that James and Townsend. I thought they were debating if a real person laying in the grass should be a caution. Like, well, she's already <laughs> dead. Do we really need to ruin the race <laughs> strategy? Because she's already dead. She can just. It's like when Won't um somebody. It's like yeah. when Dalton Kellett just sat there at St. Pete. That yeah, race. VIP parking. Yeah. Won't somebody think of Alex Pillow and his pit strategy for once? Someone. That's what Someone. James Hinchcliffe and Townsend Bell were doing. But this was so funny to me. And this was that not was... a caution. A <laughs> caution came out shortly after. So, like, what's... Is Georgina going to be back up there now next time? Oh, like... I bet. I bet they're going to get her a I new give hand. Give her a cast. Oh, I... no. That'd be so funny. But then she'll be back next year, and the track and the TV are going to have a heyday with it. Remember ne- last year when she fell? We're going to see that replay like a hundred times next year. It's going to be great. Look at what she did! <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at this! <laughs> and you know what? Shout out to, Re- to Georgina. 
because she got a picture with the race winner Scott McLaughlin and they were holding hands. So were that was really? very cute. I hope they're they gonna were. put a cast on her, but unfortunately, because they put a cast on her, she broke her wrist. She might lose mm. her job now. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like someone else who has a hurt wrist, uh David Malukas. We're heading into the T. We woke and up this morning and we're getting into the T. We do gotta get in? close for this one. Yeah, no, we gotta get close for this one. So on video, we're now zoomed in for our audio listeners, but David Malukas is out at Arrow McLaren. Um, sad day. Sad day. <sighs> yeah. Did I see this coming? Well, I maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's, does it, it sucks either way. And. Because my first initial reaction to this is like, that's kind of harsh, especially when, you know, McLaren yesterday, all of their drivers finished 22nd or worse. Right. Mm -hmm. Like. Is this is this what we got to focus on? Well, maybe it is. Right. Why? When you're already having enough problems as as a race team, one of your drivers not even being in the car. Why worry about that anymore? Right. McLaren really said. We finished all in the 20s yesterday. So you, the guy who wasn't driving, you're fired. <laughs> this is your fault, actually. That's not what happened. That's fine. Well, it did happen, but that's not. <laughs> it, it did happen. But that's not why they finished there. But yeah, this sucks for David Malukas. Like, I, I get it, though. They had a clause that said, hey, after like four races, if you're not driving in the car or whatever, then we can drop you. That's in the contract. I guess an hour after the race, uh, per Nathan Brown of the Indy Star, they sat him down and they fired him. They said, you are let go because of this clause in the contract. Uh, David Malukas this morning or overnight, uh, he made all of his social media black. Like it was just black pictures. That's what I did in high school after my one friend made me upset about some stupid drama. Like, Mm. we don't 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 text. I got a lot going on right now. I got a lot. Don't hit me up. I got yeah, don't hit me up, <laughs> but I, I hope David's OK, not only physically, but also mentally. Well, mentally, this, this is, is difficult. I mean, this is his whole life. This is his whole career. And he lost his best opportunity. Now, again, mm-hmm. as I've said before, it's it's only his fault. I can't blame. Yeah. It's hard to sit here and blame McLaren to fire somebody that's not able to do his job. Like, yeah, I get it, especially when this race team as of McLaren Thank God they got that one at St. Pete after the penalties, because otherwise this season has just not has sucked. Alex Alexander Rossi is the biggest flop in IndyCar, like in, in this decade. Like, and see, I don't know about that, but he, who it's else, not who's good. A, who's a bigger flop? Who has been this high? Maybe Colton Herta, right? But like, who has been like championship contender to like now okay. can't even like contend for a race win? When you phrase it like that. Yeah, I don't mean Rossi. like a I yes. don't mean like a guy who's like been bad, bad, bad. Like I mean like someone who's that yeah. good, but now they have flopped so hard. Yeah. So Rossi, I would agree in it is. with that definition. Yeah. You can maybe but argue they, Colton Herta, but now Hurt Herta's kind of on the rise up. Yeah. But let's focus on McLaren. But yeah. Pato takes himself out so many times. And I know he got that St. Pete win, but that's weird. Yesterday was an embarrassing performance from Pato. It, it was, and he took himself out at Long Beach as well. Yeah, you can't do like that it just in this championship, and he he can't keep doing that. And he, I, we all know Pato Award can win races, but it, he just can never put things together. He overdoes it. This is and his then, fifth year, and in the five at least, like yeah. what are we doing? And then, so those two are struggling, and then you. That third car is David Malukas, so they don't even have a proper driver in there. They're waiting for him to heal from a bike incident that we said when this bro- the news broke that he probably shouldn't have been doing this because it was just a dangerous thing to be doing when you have the biggest opportunity of your career coming up. Yeah. So it was just a unnecessary risk that he took, and he was kind of like, oh, I'm going to keep living my life. I'm not going to, you know... Well, you got change how I live with that, but now you don't have a job. You don't have a job. So, and that 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 is interesting because what's the future now for David? Right, and I don't know because there's not really rides open 
Like I think McLaren's the team that has the most rides open. Is it good Rossi? Rides. I bl- yeah, good rides. Because <laughs> I think Pato's gonna stay, but like if he keeps performing this way, Zach Brown might be like, eh, I changed my mind. Yeah. And Rossi, I I don't know what Rossi's contract is. I feel like he has an option for next year or something. But like if Rossi doesn't get better, you know, but they're not gonna just bring David back, right? That would be because awkward. Would for be McLaren, awkward. they wanted Alex Pillow. All the legal drama happened. And then they wanted Callum Eilat, but Yunkos wouldn't let Eilat go. They acted like Eilat was going to stay there. So then McLaren formed an alliance with uh, Yunkos, and then Eilat gets dropped from Yunkos anyway. So now he goes races in WEC. Yeah. So they can't get Eilat. Yeah. For so the then they get Malukas. So David Malukas was the third choice of Aero McLaren. Like, I don't. I can't say I blame McLaren. Like, is it nice? Is it good? No. It's dirty. Sure. But from their perspective as a business, I can truly understand it. But I do feel at the same time bad for all the Malukas fans and Malukas himself. Because it, it does suck. It's a horrible situation all around. And I, I already said it, but like, there's only one person to blame here. Yep. I'm, I'm sorry. I hate to be that yeah. harsh because but because now waking up to this news this morning, I feel bad about everything I've said, but I don't take back anything I've said about it because right. it stands. I mean, that's just how it works, right? If you don't show yeah. up to your job, you're not going to have that job anymore. He showed Especially up when you for, just showed, you just he showed up for job. orientation and then he got injured and couldn't work. It's like at my job right now, if something happened to me and I had to miss like a month or two, I'll be able to come back, right? I've had this job for two years now, at least. Like, yeah. I've built respect. I've built trust with my boss, whatever. But, but again, this is not, this isn't even a racing job. This is just a normal per- job, right? But mm-hmm. when, it's, again, it's like, I described it a few months ago. It's like missing the first day of work. When you've never been there. They don't even know how you are as an employee. Why would they take the risk of keeping you around instead of, Hey, this Teo Porcher Porche guy, not bad. Mm-hmm. Callum Mylot, you know, if he gets a schedule free next year, not bad. We wanted him yep. anyways. Yep. So. Exactly. So, yeah, and I guess I, we can start talking about what's the future of the six ride for this year. Um, my understanding is Teo Porcher would be available for the Indy GP. That's just the next race. And then Callum Eilat will be at the Indy 500. But then after that, it's kind of hit or miss. Uh, it sounds like Callum and Teo, they have races they're both available for per their schedule. But the but Iowa, Milwaukee, and Nashville. Callum Eilat has schedule blockings, blockings with uh, WEC. So they Those won't be available. And it's like, would they put Teo Porcher in an oval? I don't know if they would. I don't know if Teo would want to do an oval. It depends if... Teo wants to get serious about this IndyCar stuff. Like yeah. if he's like, because I again I don't even know what he's doing. Oh yeah, he's the reserve driver for so- so- Solver in F1. Yeah. But so what, if he wants to pursue IndyCar long term, then yeah, go ahead do some ovals. You got you got to do it eventually. Might as well. This is yeah. your opportunity and a fast car. So too. if they don't want him to do an oval, or Teo doesn't want to do an oval, I would say they're probably going to look at Ryan Hunter Ray and Connor Daly. They are both doing the Indianapolis 500 for Dry and Reinbold. Uh, they're going to have the recent oval experience. So I had good, Zach. I had to pick something. Oh. Oh, okay. I am kind of like, like rolling this. my eyes. When you said Connor Daly, I just <laughs> rolled my eyes. Yeah, the super sub, I guess. But the my new assumption Regan. is... He's the, literally the new Regan Smith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My assumption is that's who they would look toward because they have the oval recent this year oval racing. But yeah, might as well get one I, of these old guys that they yeah. they they know how to run an oval. Yeah, okay, I mm-hmm. see it. That'd be cool, actually. Yeah. And honestly, Ryan Hunter Ray would kind of be a good person to like pair with like Pato. <laughs> be like, hey, calm You're down, but looking, they do yeah. have a lot of young guys. Like, yes, you could kind of s- describe Alex Rossi as kind of a veteran, I guess. Yeah, but he only had know. like one or two good seasons, though. Is the thing with Rossi, and I don't think a lot of his problems his fault. 
But I think Pato especially really needs like a mentor. Because Pato, I don't think, can be the leader at a team. I don't think he's no. ready for that. And that's what he's kind of been since he, he's been there. McLaren needs... I Well, they need Alex Palou, I guess. So that's why they want him so yeah. bad. They need someone... I don't know who they need. Mm-hmm. Who's the veteran in the IndyCar paddock that's like really going to be good for them? I don't know. You know, I don't think this will happen because it sounds like he's close to renewing his contract. But... um. Joseph Newgarden's contract with Penske ends at the end of this season. So I feel like we're in one of those one of these weird situations where it's like in any other timeline that, yeah, he resigns to Penske. Why wouldn't he? But because of this Penske cheating <laughs> scandal, I, I'm, I'm not yeah. even in the camera Um, because of that. I'm just like, I'm a little uneasy about the whole thing. Now right. that you mention it, like, because well, we'll move on to that because Joseph had a yeah. press conference on Friday at Barber. He didn't say anything on social media. He didn't want he want to say anything. He wanted to wait till, you know, everyone see him in person. And he had a lot to say. And most notably, he was very emotional. He was very choked up. So this is obviously affecting his mental and in the interviews. This Oh, my God. In the interviews this weekend. He was so dry. He was so short, like with like the pre-race interview with Kevin Lee yesterday. He was just like, yep, no, no effect. We're just going to, you know, put our head down. Focus. Mm-hmm. That's not Joseph. That no. is not Joseph. Um, And obviously with his performance yesterday, he made a mistake, He's... kind of got into into yeah. it with Marcus Armstrong. There's a lot to be, and there's a lot to dive into with this Penske cheating scandal. We already made an emergency episode again about, you know, our initial reactions, but that came out before the press conference. My thing is, I feel like this whole, everything that Joseph said has just been so dramatized, drama, dramatized, dramatized, whatever the word is. Mm-hmm. Like, Joseph said he thought it was a rule change that he could use push the pass on the restart because that's what you can do at thermal at the thermal challenge. Um, I just what else did like I could get into other stuff he said, like, what else did he say? Like, well, he was he was very emotional about it. And one of the main things he said was like, you can call me every word in the book, but I'm not a liar. Like, don't call me a liar. And then people are like, well. It sounds like you're lying, Joseph, jo- Joey boy. It sounds like you're lying. And see, I think with him, the reason he got off social media was not only to refocus, but also because people were really getting under his skin. I mean, look at the Roman Grosjean thing from Nashville. He was firing back at Grosjean fans after that incident in 2022. And that wasn't the best look for him. So I think he started to realize like, hey, and then with the bus bro stuff too, people didn't like a segment they did about David Malukas, can coincidentally. And after what that, was bus bro just kind of ended. What was that? Um, they called Scott and Joseph called David a f boy, and they were just kind of like making oh, fun right. of him for how okay. he posts on social media and everything. I need to go watch that. It, like, I, for me, I thought it was funny. I got the joke. But I, Apparently I there's a lot of tension between Scott and Joseph. We'll talk about that later. That's not. Yeah, that's okay. another topic. I think they didn't agree with how it ended. I think Scott wanted to keep going, but Joseph wanted to stop and just focus on everything. Yeah. But what oh, what I'm saying is Joseph, it was really getting under him, under his skin. And he wanted to just bring the focus back in. And now with this, he does not like being the center of attention. He is not a super sociable person like i know he can be loud and funny and the older videos of his and in bus bros and the Pinsky Pinsky games games, yeah but he has said himself he's an introvert he likes to keep to himself but he does his best for the fans he has said that before when he's at the track like but if he's like in a bad mood like he's gonna be focused on trying to to talk to kevin lee no no i wouldn't want to talk to kevin lee if i'm in a bad mood so like so i i Joseph Newgarden, I, this off weekend couldn't come at a better time for him. Get, mm-hmm. He's going to be reset, try and spend some time with his family and get re back to normal, hopefully, for the month of May and try and go back to back at the Indianapolis 500. Because 
last year at this time, I don't think he was as mental clarity as he was at St. Pete. So if he can get kind of get close to that again, like watch out at Indy, but with him, this whole painting of him being a villain irks me. This whole this the sparging a liar. Of his character is just yeah. disgusting to me. It is because it's not who Joseph Newgarden is. It's yeah. not like sure maybe they cheated and maybe he he admitted as much that he did press the push to pass button and like whatever but this is not this huge major scandal that i mean it's already taken care of media it's done yeah i don't understand what the controversy is 2023 they already took the win away why are we still arguing about it because again we talked about it in our emergency episode race teams and race car drivers have been trying to cheat since two since the second automobile was invented i mean forever like it's yeah. a thing of motorsports. It, it's just a thing. Why are we so? <laughs> I can't believe. I can't believe Team Pisky cheated. <laughs> what <laughs> we need justice to hit them, Alex. I we can't let them get away with this. Oh wait, they're not getting away with it. They didn't get away with it. They're so not. why are we blowing this out of proportion? I actually look red. Oh my god. Oh my... <laughs> For me, I think a lot of fans and media, they want IndyCar to have a villain and they want to have a story. So they're trying to push Joseph as the villain. Mind you, Scott McLaughlin got the same exact penalty and no one's treating him like this villain. Period. No one is talking about Scott McLaughlin the same way. And you are right. And I'll love to NBC socials. Um, we're friends with their social media, one of their social media managers, but they put a video out. It's like drivers react to the Joseph Newgarden penalty. And Scott McLaughlin's one of the drivers in that video. Like that's weird. They got that the same weird. penalty. I don't know. At, it just really annoys me as I know Joseph is not this malicious guy. He's just a quiet person oh. who keeps to himself, who can be fun and excited, like loud and chatty when he's ha- laid back and chill. Like he's just not this villain. I will. It annoys the hell out of me. <laughs> there were a lot of. Like, I don't get it. There was a lot of important people over the weekend saying some gross things about Penske yeah. and about well, Joseph. And there's also like photos of like Joseph just kind of standing by himself while a bunch of drivers are like in a chatting all amongst each other. He doesn't. He once again, he's just not a chatty person. He doesn't want to talk about this. He wants to move on. If he goes and talks to them, they're all going to bring it up, right? He just, it's just not his thing to do all yeah. this. So, look, call me a Joseph Defender. I don't care. But I have followed this man for over a decade now. He's not this person that certain journalists out there, one specific one, is making him out to be. And it rightfully pisses me off. So He's a hero of the sport. He got yes. an American back to Indianapolis 500 victory lane. Like, yeah, he got our he country should be back the, to, Yeah, he should be he's, the face of the sport. He is the most marketable driver. He is, he is capable the NBC of doing sports so intro much. has the Joseph like winning the 500 thing in there. And yeah, maybe yeah. sure it was the last year's 500, but like that was an American winning. The, he's a big yes. deal. He should be the star of IndyCar. And and what we're doing at what the series, not maybe not the series itself, but the fans, media, etc., are doing, they're turning against him for something that you can say was cheating. I mean, it was cheating, but they got, it they got was caught. cheating, but, but that's the thing. It got like, taken care of. It got penalized. It got like, taken why care still... of. Making him out to be a villain is just so wrong. Why are we trying to so cancel him? It feels like they're trying to cancel yes, him. Why? why are we trying to cancel him? Like, what, <laughs> what do you want? Like, genuinely, what do you want team Penske and Joseph to do? You want them to drop out of IndyCar? I don't know. Like, is that the answer? Like, because they've been yeah. penalized. Yeah. I don't, again, I just don't get what else they want. I know. So, whatever. It's stupid. Yeah, I agree with and you. It's stupid. What it's sucks, pissing me off, too. Yeah. What sucks is now his mental clarity is pretty much gone, I think. He's going to, this off week, he's really going to have to just take his mind off everything, get back to business. And look, if. He's just very reserved now. He's probably lost a lot of trust with media and maybe even his fellow drivers because they're just making him out to be a bad guy. Like he's, I don't know. 
Man, I could go on about this forever. I don't yeah. want to do that. I think. Well, I think the but... sport needs to move on from it. Like, I think there is a positive. They're not in a yes. position. They're not in a position to focus on a stupid well, controversy like this. I think it's drama's kind of, good, but not when it, they're framing it like this. Yeah, that's how I would probably describe it because it's like um, people are talking about IndyCar. That's good, but we got to move on from this. We don't want everyone to see our sport and how we're debating about this whole cheating scandal. That's not a scandal. It's not a scandal. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that should be the thumbnail. It's not a scandal. I don't know. I, people are acting like this is like NASCAR spin gate in 2013 Richmond with Michael Walter bracing. Yeah, it's not. This is something Chad Knauss would have got suspended for for like three races and then it'd be forgotten about. Like maybe it's a bigger deal than that. Maybe maybe it's like five races Chad Knauss would get suspended for in NASCAR. But it, yeah, because spin gate like, was kind of so like, overblown. That was, that was kind of, like it was malicious intent. Like it was like it was like dirty, but like I don't know. I guess maybe because people are debating intent. I don't know. I'm ready to move on. Actually, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. Over it. So let's move on. Uh, again, Good news. emergency episode. If you want our thoughts on the actual penalties and everything, but one more thing in the T here. Uh, Kevin Harvick will be practicing and qualifying the number five Hendrick car while Kyle Larson attempts to qualify for the Indianapolis 500. Very cool. Love this. it. Is cool. He had Kevin Harvick. It's funny because Kevin Harvick has a lot of wins in the number five junior motorsports car when he did, the, you know, the nationwide series races back then. So it would be cool to see him in the five car again. It's just because um, yeah. it obviously it's, you know, it was going to be hard for Kyle to because that's qualifying weekend. You got to be he's got to be there. He's got to be locked in. Right. He can't yeah. be going back and forth. Um so that's cool. Be cool to see Kevin in the car again. He'll get to talk about that on TV a little bit. Um, yeah. It's just, and again, that's why the whole reason that Alex, we were like, well, Dale Jr. They should just let Dale Jr. drive the whole weekend in that car or Makes something. So right? much sense. It would have been so cool. It's the All Star race. There's no bigger name in the sport, you know. Um, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. it's still cool. So in the Hendrick press release about this, they called Kevin Harvick their reserve driver or standby driver for Kyle Larson for the All-Star race. Oh. So I wonder if there's not a tentative plan if Larson like, makes the, the final four to maybe have Harvick do the All-Star race as well. If Larson That's, like is that at bump day or the fast nine, six, whatever yeah. they do. Yeah. I wonder, or maybe just bump day if there's, and then he'll just qualify 12th and not do the fast 12. No, it's the Indy 500. There's no, I know, way. but if the they way do they're that, talking, I will be very disrespectful. I will be very mad because it's the Indy 500. And, you qualify. No, I agree. And I had someone respond to me saying, well, the prestige of the NASCAR Ulster race is important to the Who crew said members. That? Oh yeah, know. that, that, yeah. The prestige, but, like, because they get a bonus or something, but there's. The prestige of the Indianapolis 500 is like a quadrillion times more than the NASCAR All-Star Race. I don't even think the NASCAR All-Star Race has prestige anymore. Come on. Yeah, because it says, well, it says right here that um I don't care. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about the crew members. I'm sorry. I don't care. You don't care. Your mama doesn't care. My dog doesn't care. No one cares about the little bonus for the crew members winning the All-Star Race. Sorry. God. So yeah, <laughs> personally, if it were me, I would just have Kevin Harvick do the race too. It is Why so not? selfish for Kyle Larson to try his best at the biggest race in the world. Wow, how dare? Wow. How dare Kyle Larson do that? Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Well, Zach, I think it's time for fantasy. Let us know, uh v video watchers on YouTube. Did you like us being zoomed in for the whole T segment? I like that. Uh, that was cute. We'll test it out. That was fun. Um, so yeah, fantasy, uh, Indy car first, uh, you got the point cause Scott Dixon finished 15th and Joseph, my pick finished 16th. Uh, they were battling a lot that last lap. They're alternating a lot. It was so Indy car. They kept it. Oh, but do you think they were air blocking Alex Scott and Joseph? Do you think they were air blocking? I, I don't think so. I think they were side by side. <laughs> they made more passes than what, uh. Well, Larson and Denny were making, I'll tell you what. 
Yeah. But uh, in IndyCar, Zach, you are now three points and I have zero. So you're doing pretty good. I did lose a St. Pete win. because of What the a turn movie. of events. I'm actually like leading in the IndyCar points. This is crazy. Uh, so next race for IndyCar is the Indy GP on May 11th. So not this weekend, but next weekend. Uh, NASCAR's going to Kansas. I have a pick. Do you? I have my pick as well. Are you ready? All right, I'm ready. All right, three, two, one. I'm pasting. I'm trying to pick Kyle Larson, and Alex is also trying to pick Kyle Larson because Alex likes men and he's gay. It's true. He's stealing my pick because, of course, he does. Because you're gay. Yep. You're literally gay. You like men. Yes. (sighs) Yes. <sighs> you do too. I don't Why couldn't that. you just Why? You don't even want Kyle Larson. You don't. <laughs> I don't? I picked him. Appar- what are you talking about? I think you were just trying to block me. I think you're you're air blocking. I'm air blocking. <laughs> you're you're air blocking me. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, that's what you do in NASCAR, right? Well, I got another pick, Zach. I'm, I'm ready I to keep air blocking. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, three, two, one. I'm trying to pick Dennis Hamilton, and Alex is also trying to pick Dennis Hamilton. Yep. Okay. It's working. Okay. Now it gets kind of difficult, because, like, I think this is where we're going to have different picks. I hate you. I don't want... I I wish I could cuss, but I don't feel like (laughs) bleeping that out. Well... I want to call you slurs right now. Like, I'm just so... Well... You can do that off camera. It's okay. All right. Okay. Whatever. Ready? I am ready. Three, two, one. I am trying to pick Tyler Reddick. <laughs> <laughs> we both picked Tyler Reddick. Most. God. Zach, where'd you go? <laughs> All right. Okay. I got one lined up. I got this. Some next one. <laughs> This next one for sure. I got this. I'm calling up Rick Ware Racing right now, bro. <laughs> you know, Zach, Jimmy Johnson is in the race. Jimmy oh, Johnson okay. is an option. You could go He's Jimmy Johnson. He's Kansas before. Didn't he, win, he didn't he win the SpongeBob race? He did. Yes. Oh, what a king. That's my go. Yeah. Are right, you ready? Love Jimmy. Yes. You are ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one. I'm trying to pick Chase Elliott, and Alex is picking William Byron. All that just Ooh. for us to split teammates again for the fifth time. I thought, I thought I was going to let you have Bubba. I didn't want to go with Bubba because of the pit crew. No, I'm not. No, I don't pick. Why would I pick Bubba? He has Bubba's one here recently. Wins. He has two yeah. career wins. I'm not picking Bubba. Okay, sorry, Chase. Chase has been so. So good. what? Because at this point, Chase is so consistent. I mean, Byron's also really Fair. consistent too. So, but um, yeah. Chase has won at Kansas before. Uh, Byron has not, but Byron, I think My he might turn Byron, things around a little bit after his past. I weekend. feel like Byron yeah. has a skill issue at tracks that are like multi groove. Like I know he has a win mm. at Homestead, but I just feel like he has a bit of a skill issue. Okay. Are you Rich. just saying that because I picked him? Yes. <laughs> well. Yeah. I don't know. Chase has a better Chase. I mean, Chase is above Byron in points. I'm trying to compare like their stats this year, like because Byron has two races that really like take him down in this, the standings. Yeah, like so. But Chase is just I don't know. He has four top fives in the last five races, but mm. Byron has I... similar ish numbers. So, so. I think what we saw in our fantasy here is we think it's either going to be Kyle Larson or a Toyota or basically Reddick or Hamlin. I don't want to pick Bell because he's so inconsistent. Oh my God. I don't know what's going on with that team. I I already said why I didn't pick Bubba because it's what happened to them yesterday. I don't know. They were in that crash with Byron, right? Oh, Bell was in that crash. Okay. I wasn't paying attention. Um. But then, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't Ty Gibbs maybe, but like I don't see that happening either at Kansas. So I don't know. No. It's gonna be an interesting. Yeah, that's interesting a, race. Yeah, we we kind of went through all the 
consistent guys. That's why, like, fantasy picking is just for us. It's just we go through the JGR and Hendrick guys, and we just got to hope that we don't pick the same ones, which we did yeah. this week. So, Martin. There's, Martin. Oh, Martin. Martin could as well. Remember he, Kansas last year is where Martin crashed out like on lap three or yeah, something because of a tire He's thing. not normally that good at Kansas. But he's like, won here before, but those were both in the 78, I believe. Yeah. Has he won like, here in the 18? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. His win's coming, but I don't know when it is. Like, it's yeah. it's coming at some point, but because I thought it might have been yesterday. Maybe Darlington for him? I don't know. The last four races at Kansas have been 23-11, 23-11, Denny Hamlin, Denny Hamlin. You mean 23-11? Like, Tyler yeah, Reddick yeah, yeah. won Sorry. last fall. You were... Okay. Den- Denny Hamlin has won all four. Some of them as an owner. That's what I meant. Yeah. And then. Uh, but the last one who won before that was Kyle Larson. <laughs> yeah. And before that, it was Kyle Busch. Oh, my God. Is Kyle Busch going to come back? He had a good run yesterday. Kyle Busch. Hmm. He gained he gained six spots in maybe. the points. Oh, yeah. That's good. He was fast. Uh, I, was also, I was also going to say. Uh, one of the Penske cars, either the 12 or 22, not the two, uh, could possibly be good as well blaney's had good runs at kansas before Blaney. But i don't lost. but i don't want to pick a penske right now at no, a nascar they're not gonna win i don't think ford's gonna win until like we might have to get a crazy race or maybe one will win sonoma but like i yeah i wonder i love this story how long is it going to take yeah. How long is it going to take? I I don't know. Trucks are at Kansas this weekend. I'm trying to think of strong Ford teams in the trucks. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they have a lot of teams at this point. Yeah. Yikes. Well, that's interesting. Um. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I feel like I got very animated. I'm home alone, so I got to be more animated today. So. Hmm. This is a fun episode. Uh, we're doing it earlier in the day too, so we're not like yeah. Zach's not wiped out from work and everything. <laughs> So, yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So next week, we what are we? What races are happening next week? Kansas uh, F1 is at Miami. If we're going to talk about that, I'll probably be on at the same time. So probably I'll I'll have it on. I'll have it on, but I won't be like, like, yeah, if anything crazy happens, we'll talk about that. Uh, Jackson Todd should join us uh, as always after Kansas races and Zach, we do have an Apple review before Thank we go for the day. Uh, would you like to do the honors? I would like to read it. Um, so this is from J Pan Coast. He, um, they say, love the show. To demonstrate how much I do actually love the show, I listen to all the NASCAR stuff too. Thank you they must so be an much. IndyCar fan. Thank you for bearing <laughs> through the NASCAR stuff. I get uh, it. It's stuff. We just complain about the same thing every week, like all NASCAR yeah. fans. You're so real for that. That's, you know. that. that's when you know you're a true supporter. You stick around through all the stuff you don't care about. So yeah. really, really appreciate true. that. Very valid. Um, if you'd like to have us read your review as well, do what JPan Coast did and write a five-star Apple review on Apple Podcasts. Or you can leave a very nice, heartfelt comment on YouTube, and we'll read that too. Rate us five stars on Spotify as well. You can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash gayracingpod. Uh, I put a new bonus video out over there this past week on my own. Uh, I still haven't I, watched that. Oh, my God. I need to go watch that. That's cute. Uh, I just went through all of my NASCAR diecast as a kid, like how you and I did when you visited uh, two years ago. Uh, I just like look at them, show them to the camera, and moved on. I just said, this is what this car is. It was fun. I'm like, all oh, little memories I had with them. I need to do so, that, too. I have yeah, and I said in the video that you, we, when I t- told you I was doing that, you wanted to yeah. do that yourself. So and I obviously have I all this we, stuff here. I want to like kind of yeah. show in more detail because you guys can't really see the see it in detail. Yeah. But yeah, that's over on Patreon right now. Uh, you can like and subscribe here on YouTube and you can follow us on socials at Gay Racing Pod at Dreamy Zach Racing and at New Gaiden. And with that, Zach, I think that's another episode done. I think that's all. That's all she wrote. I'll, we'll see. I don't know who she is. Maybe Georgina. That's all Georgina wrote. She lost her <laughs> hand. Um, <laughs> I'll, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> Bye.